I did a video in the past called the Hunting Bullet Hype where I debunked the hunting industry's infatuations with ballistic coefficients and sectional density. I briefly touched on terminal ballistics a bit in that video, but I always felt that I didn't go far enough down the killing power rabbit hole in that video. You know, it's a touchy subject, but fortunately for you, I'm not afraid to tackle those. We usually reference foot-pounds of kinetic energy when hunters talk about killing power. We know it's not the perfect metric for killing power, or even close to perfect, but unfortunately, it's kind of the best thing we have at this time. The Taylor KO or knockout formula was the first serious attempt to quantify killing power of cartridges on big game animals. But as bullet design got better, we found flaws in Taylor's formula. Today, Taylor's formula is widely considered debunked or invalid because it makes obviously less powerful cartridges seem more lethal based off of weight and diameter alone. Taylor eventually admitted to some inconsistencies with his formula. The big problem with Taylor's formula is that it makes bullet diameter equal to velocity. You know, making his values seem a little bit funky at times. You know, later on, Hatcher's formula suffered similar issues when you made it his formula to rifle ballistics. Then several uh, uh, gun rag riders decided that they were going to make their own lethality indexes uh, for their own killing power formulas. And finally, manufacturers like Hornady decided to jump into the mix with their own HITS formula. The problem with these newer killing power formulas is that they put a big emphasis on sectional density. As I explained in my hunting bullet hype video, Sectional density isn't really what equates to penetration with modern hunting bullets. Mass and bullet construction is what determines penetration to a larger extent on targets these days. You know, as soon as a bullet touches an animal, it changes shape and mass, and all those neat little sectional density numbers go right out the window. It didn't take long for Hornady to finally completely dump their HITS formula. As a matter of fact, they scrubbed it from their website and now they pretend like the HITS formula never even existed. But, you know, hunters out there know that a ballistic tip bullet with the highest sectional density numbers will penetrate much less than a copper bullet with the lowest sectional density numbers. Modern bonded and monolithic bullets will penetrate right through an animal better than just about any heavier cup and core bullet will. This is because bullet construction is much more important than sectional density. The entire sectional density concept is just sort of outdated today with modern bullets. These modern killing power formulas give fun, you know, really funky nonsensical values because they put too much emphasis on sectional density. Most of these formulas We'll try to convince you that a cartridge like the 338 Win Mag is better for dangerous game than the 375 H&H is, you know, because of higher SD bullets. But in practice, we know that just the opposite is true. So all of these killing power formulas that people use are quasi-scientific attempts to quantify how lethal a cartridge will be, but they all fail. We always go full circle back to using kinetic energy to compare the killing power of loads again. It's an easy calculation that translates well to any distance basically, but using kinetic energy has big issues as well. Even though we've settled on kinetic energy being used as a standard measure of power, it has to be looked at with a grain of salt. For instance, if I picked up a baseball and I threw it at you, hitting you right in the middle of the chest with 80 foot-pounds of kinetic energy, you'd be pissed off at me, right? But if I shot you with an arrow and it hit you in the chest with 80 foot-pounds of energy, you'd be dead. So again, the construction and shape of the projectile is extremely important, and kinetic energy doesn't account for that. 
You know, when you put the calculator down and think about it, there's three factors that determine how lethal a bullet's going to be. And I'll cover these three factors in order of importance. The first and foremost factor is shot placement. You won't get a quick kill if the bullet isn't placed in a critical area. Velocity, bullet weight, and bullet diameter don't matter if the bullet isn't put into the right spot. And this is 100% the shooter's responsibility. And the second factor is physical damage. The bullet must destroy enough critical tissue uh, or the central nervous system to kill fast. You need a bullet that expands or fragments enough to destroy critical tissue and organs and leave an adequate wound channel. The bullet also needs to penetrate your particular animal deep enough to reach those critical areas. This is the bullet's job in the equation. The third factor, the third and final factor, is the game animal's state of being while it's shot. A relaxed or unsuspecting animal might go right down when you hit it right, and a stressed out animal pumped up on adrenaline might run a good distance with that same shot. Also, as most hunters know, a weak, sick, or old animal might not have any fight left in them, where, where a young, strong animal might just refuse to die. And this is completely up to the animal being shot at. So according to these three factors, the shooter has a job, the bullet has a job, and the animal itself has a part to play. Together, these three factors are what determines how dramatic a kill will be. You just aren't going to put a quantifiable number on that, no matter how hard you try. So with the sectional density nonsense out of the way, we should discuss the relationship between mass and velocity when it comes to killing game animals. Most people really hate that velocity has twice the value of mass in the kinetic energy formula, but there's a reason for that. Many shooters believe that a wound cavity is the result of bullet mass, but that isn't true. The size of the wound cavity is the result of the shape and the velocity of the bullet as it travels through the animal. So when comparing similar bullets, the higher velocity projectile will create a larger wound cavity. This is the kinetic energy being expended during penetration. So velocity is necessary to do tissue damage. Where the actual mass of the bullet comes into play is for penetration. And it's why elephant hunters use big heavy bullets. But bullet construction plays a key role here too because bullets that shed mass during penetration won't penetrate as well as bullets that hold their mass. And Bullet expansion also creates drag, and you have to have enough mass to overcome that. And I'll be honest, most of the people who hate using kinetic energy in the killing power equation are the 4570 types. They believe that a larger bullet has to be more deadly than a smaller bullet. They claim it makes a bigger hole. They think that kin kinetic energy figures are wrong because it makes a 180 grain bullet from a 30 6 deadlier than a 400 grain 4570 bullet going about 1350, 1400 feet per second. But any real hunter who's butchered a lot of animals shot with a lot of different cartridges will tell you that their logic is completely wrong. An animal shot with a 180 grain 30 6 bullet has much more tissue damage than an animal shot with a standard 4570 load. Trust me, I've seen a lot of deer and pigs shot with both, and the 30 hot 6 does more damage, sometimes a lot more damage. I've shot deer with everything from a 375 H&H and 4570 down to a 243. The most damage I've ever seen done on deer was actually with the 257 Weatherby. You know, those are just absolutely devastating on deer. Uh, Soft-skinned animals, they do massive damage on them. So velocity does kill because it raises the kinetic energy that can be transferred to the animal's tissue. You know, physics and real results in the field verify this. But you also can't let yourself get fooled by velocity. 
Velocity has limitations in the killing power equation. Without adequate mass and bullet weight retention, a bullet will be a poor penetrator on tougher animals. If, if it can't reach the vitals on an animal or perform an energy dump for a longer duration through that animal, a fast bullet might not kill very well. Also, you have to consider that more velocity means more powder, and more powder means more recoil and expenses to the shooter. Velocity can also hurt bullet performance by compromising the structural integrity of the bullet or by making it unpredictable when it enters the animal. So it's easy to drive a bullet fast enough to where it just makes no sense for hunting. This is really the problem with, you know, with a lot of the Weatherby cartridges and the ultra fast magnums. So it's actually the velocity and the shape of the bullet that causes cavitation inside the animal, not mass. This is why many high velocity cartridges have a reputation for both meat damage and for putting animals down fast. Hunters are constantly looking for that perfect balance of performance without meat damage and recoil, which is why we don't hunt with high velocity magnums at shorter distances. In the end, cavitation or the wound channels, we like to call it, is directly proportional to kinetic energy and bullet expansion and or shape, which is why kinetic energy numbers are currently the way we compare the killing power of bullets, you know, even though it only tells half the story. Along with kinetic energy, we have to consider bullet construction as an equally important variable to the killing power equation. Velocity, mass, and sectional density go right out the window if your bullet falls apart. And as hunters, killing power needs to be balanced with recoil, meat and fur damage, penetration requirements, powder expenses, and distance to the target. So in the end, there is no killing power formula that's going to fit every hunting circumstance. It's a fool's errand, trust me. Well, I hope this video stirred up some drama and sends every armchair physicist my way to shift the YouTube algorithm into my favor. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and as always, good hunting.